Well, g'day everybody. Welcome to Entrouded. What we're going to do today is set up and start a new game from the start. Now, a couple of things you will notice from the outset here, just on the main screen when you get into the game, you'll see over to your right hand side that I'm currently level 25. So there will be some information that I'll share in a moment, which is why I'm mentioning that. So what you do at this stage, you just choose whether you're going to uh, host a game or if you just want to save a, a local game. So what I'm going to do is uh, just create a game on a server here that I've already set up. So one of the first things you'll notice if you look over just to the uh, left hand side of where I'm about to save, it says flame level one. So you notice that the flame can get up to level six. Now I know the flame means nothing to you at this stage, but it will in a moment so that's just letting you know that I'm starting from the beginning so what you'll have at this stage when you start up the game is you'll be exactly like myself you'll have nothing equipped and what the game is just doing at the moment is just giving you a bit of a an introduction into the game what the character looks like and what the uh, different environments can uh, sort of look like so if you wanted to uh, take a quick look at your menus from here first of all in the backpack menu you can see that I've got nothing equipped as yet and you'll see down the bottom on the left hand side I have uh, what's called an action bar now if I go out of that menu and use my d-pad if I'm on controller here uh, you can see that I've got nothing equipped to that action bar or the hot bar but what you can do is once you acquire weapons and that sort of thing you can equip them to there so it uh, makes life a bit easier for you to have that equipped so what we'll do is just commune with the flame and throughout the game you'll see little bits of information that pop up similar to this they just give you a little bit of an idea on what's going on in the game and gives you a backstory of the game so all it's telling us is that the realm of Embervale has been consumed by the Shroud and the flame calls for us. We need to find a place in the ruined world to construct a flame altar and create a shelter from the dark. So what we'll do at this stage now is, as we can see the doors in front of us have opened, we'll head out those and you'll now see on the left hand side it said new recipe unlocked. So and also a new location charted so if we go into the crafting menu which is just next to our uh, backpack we now have a menu for a flame altar so what we need to craft that or create that is five stone and you'll see there a whole heap of other stuff don't get confused by any of that as yet all we're really concerned with right now is just crafting the flame altar and it mentioned to us as well we have a new quest which is to claim a spot for our base so what we need to do as it says there is just claim a spot and we'll receive some XP for doing so and this is a good time to uh, give you a bit of an indicator on how this particular thing works if you look down the bottom of the information screen for the claim a spot for your base you'll see show on map so if I just select X basically what the map has done there for me it's opened me up exactly where I need to go so at this stage if I wanted to I can actually uh, select on A for actions and I could go alright I'll select that as a waypoint or what I could do as well from there is go to journal and it'll give me the information on it and what it's actually requiring me to do as well now you would have seen just a second ago we had a little bit of a look at a map now you will see a slightly different view of the map here from what I do because I've finished the game and have unlocked all of the sections of the map I've got a really really wide uh, variety of the map which is unlocked now the main reason that I show you that is not to confuse you but just to sort of give you an indicator just how big this world actually is it is gigantic there is so much you can do here and there is a heck of a lot of stuff you can do and uh, the game never gets old and it never gets boring let me tell you 
All right, so what we'll do now is we've had a bit of a look around here. I think we'll just uh, continue on out into the map here. And as I approach this little tree here, it just says to me, harvest. And two things have happened there. I've now got twigs and plant fiber, and I've now unlocked a new recipe at the workbench. And as yet, we are yet to have the workbench, but once we get down the bottom and we work out how to get string and wooden logs, we'll uh, look into getting that workbench constructed. So if we quickly look down here, string, it's very easy. It's plant fiber. And we've already got two plant fiber and we haven't even done very much. So it's not too complicated uh, getting all of the achievements uh, worked out and getting everything sorted out. So you'll see throughout the world here as well. I have in front of me here what is called a piece of law, and this is uh, part of the Alchemist Theories Part 1. So it's just with regards to the flame and its murmurs and telling me all about the flame. Now you can choose to, if you want, just to ignore these uh, particular bits of law, or you can actually look into them and, and see where they come from and what they're all about. Now if you actually want to look into that uh, bit of law or any other pieces of law you'll see them all here in your journal so because I've again this is because I've already completed you know probably 90% of the bits of law in the game uh, most of everything is already done already for me so it'll look a little bit different for yourself but this just gives you a bit of a general idea as to where you're actually looking for this law so you'll see here on this screen a vast world awaits you filled with secrets and peril and navigate the map to track your discoveries. So we've already done that, so that's fine. So you can see down below us here. Oh, I don't think we want to fall off there, but you'll notice if we looked on the map, you'll see our little arrow is pointing straight ahead, and that is uh, going towards our plane's first base. And that is where that little red haze or red fog is down the bottom there. So that's what we need to try and get to. So we can't get to there from here. It well, looks like we're on top of the big cliff at the moment. So I think we're a little bit stuck. All right, so you notice at this stage that we can't interact with trees or anything like that at this stage. However, what we need to do in order to uh, do that at a later date is uh, keep looking around, see what we can find. We've picked up a couple of bandages there, which is quite handy. And you'll see there, we've now picked up a torch as well. So that's now, as you'll see down in the action bar or the hot bar down the bottom, it's now equipped us with the torch. So we're just headed into a cave now. That, and this is just giving you a bit of an idea as to what the environments look like as well. Now you'll notice just flying over my shoulder there, you would have seen a little red sort of light comes and lights everything up and it's lit those lamps up there. So what that's doing, and that'll happen throughout the game, is it'll just give you indicators as to where you need to head within the map so it looks like at some stage we need to head down that corridor down just to our right hand side there and the tunnel and go down this ladder that's just next to us but as there's something a little bit closer to us at the moment we'll just head over here so once again it's lit the way for us and we've been given an interact here so now we've been given an explosive power ball and there's quite a few of those and you can see just ahead of us here, this um, particular environment looks like it's able to be destroyed. And you can see there, the lamp has lit up just in front of us as well. So what this is telling us in the game is it's just giving us an indicator as to what to use these power balls for. So it's introducing you to the fact that the environment in the game is easy to be destroyed and uh, you can actually gain access to different areas and you can actually defeat enemies and whatnot as well by using this particular tool so now we've gained a hatchet which is pretty cool and we've now got a weapon so this is also a good opportunity to sort of introduce you to another mechanic that the game actually to be honest really doesn't give you a good indicator of at all but You'll see in front of me here, I've got a, a chest and uh, you know, a table, which has another piece of lore on it. But what I can also do at this table is actually destroy the table. 
and you'll see within any of the environments in the game here that you can actually destroy a lot of the environments and you'll see to the left hand side of the screen there a rough wood block has been unlocked at the workbench so that's a building block for our building when we are ready to construct it so you'll see it's pretty obvious uh, as you approach a lot of the different things within the game what is able to be destroyed and what isn't but a good rule of thumb for this early in the game is basically destroy everything always try and destroy everything and get used to the game as much as you possibly can so you will find these chests here all around the map so basically they go in terms of loot from uh, you know quite simple loot like we've just got there in a wooden chest up to silver chest and then also gold chest and we encountered a silver chest just a moment ago when we broke into the uh, room behind the rubble there and gold chests give you a lot rarer loot as well as do the silver ones so just approaching now we've just come across the first of the blue shroud just down below us Which is a little bit scary to begin with <laughs> and there's another torch that we can grab there as well so this is just giving us some information here saying the flame allows us to resist the shroud but if you linger you will perish escape the shroud to replenish your maximum time within the shroud so you've only got a maximum amount of time you can spend within the shroud before you perish so it looks like in order to get down to where we need to get to we're going to have to go into the shroud now this stage you'll notice just on the top of your screen there we've now got a countdown timer for how long we're actually able to stay in the shroud so we had five minutes when we began and again this is another one of the really good parts of the game and how it sort of indicates to you what is required of you when you begin it's just giving us a little indicator there to uh, press R to lock onto foes and B to dodge out of harm's way. So we can see there's an enemy down there. So we've just focused on him. What we'll do now is you can choose if you want to. To attack him outright or if you want you can actually sneak up on him. So we'll take a look at that weapon that we've got that's just a rusty short sword if we wanted to take a quick look at it in our backpack as well we can do so if you wanted to compare it so the hatchet is a melee weapon level one it gives 11 damage and the rusty short sword gives 11 damage as well so either one of these weapons is just fine So if we wanted to say try and sneak up on these fellas here what you can do in this game which is really good is sneak attack people and if you have environment to actually hide behind you can hide behind the environment as well so you end up doing more damage now you'll see here a couple of things that I've looted from the enemies that I've killed one of which is shroud spores now you'll gain a little bit more understanding as we go along as to what each of these different uh, items is and what they have the potential to uh, create at a later date so now that we've picked up that stone we've now unlocked a stone block at the workbench as well and again as I said once we get to uh, craft our workbench in a moment this will uh, give you a little bit better of an understanding as to what we're actually talking about so another little bit of information here that's just popped up to us is that this little uh, strange looking thing here it just says if you fall you will rise again at your last return beacon so that's just letting you know that if you were to die at this stage you would resurrect at this last return beacon and you'll have what's called a uh, tombstone very similar to what you have in other games where you'll have a little stone which has anything that you had before you died in that little tombstone so you don't need to sort of be concerned that you'll lose absolutely everything if you die 
So what we'll do at this stage here is just have a little bit of a look through here in long keep and as I mentioned always loot everything wherever you possibly can it's a very good habit to get into so even just within the last minute or two where we've just sort of had a bit of a look around and looted in terms of what we have in our backpack now we've got 40 wood we've got a little bit of stone some shroud spores and also some animal fur as well so we've already collected a little bit and we haven't even done too much now you would have noticed just there as well that the music changed just when I went to run downstairs there that was just letting me know that there are enemies close by and the enemies were the rats <laughs> so as we saw earlier that's not all of the uh, enemies there are other enemies in the game but those are just the enemies that we've come across just now as I mentioned always destroy everything any barrels you can find anything you can find at all now what will happen at this stage is you won't get anything that is too complicated in the game you'll just receive a couple of little things here and there just to sort of get you started off within the game so you'll just notice something that happened just then I did what's called a double jump so if you weren't familiar with this already this is actually a good opportunity to introduce you to the skills tree now as you'll see here I've already got all of mine filled out but what this basically does is it increases your skills and your ability to do different things within the game basically what you need to do is start off uh, in the center in the center circle here and then build your skills from outside of there and as you'll see here as well there's basically different trails that actually exist within this you can become an assassin a ranger beast master survivor athlete barbarian warrior tank battle mage healer wizard you get the general gist but one of the first things that i would quite possibly aim for is heading along the survivor tree here and going through endurance runner and getting to double jump as I mentioned just a moment ago with the double jump skill that I had it really really helps you to evade attacks and also helps you to get to different areas that you're trying to get to for looting as well it's a really really handy skill to have and the second of the skills that I would aim for is along the assassin tree here go through dexterity airborne and then head towards updraft but that's something that we'll come to later updraft basically gives you a small height boost when you're flying along and as I mentioned we don't have the wingsuit yet but that's one of the things that we'll get to and the way that you gain skill points as you'll see in the top left hand side of your screen there is by defeating shroud roots which are scattered throughout the map which we'll cover in a little while but I just wanted to touch on this skill tree just to give you an idea on how it works and what you should be aiming for as you progress through the game <laughs> 